introduction. Um, I'm presenting, as it is written, um, yeah, some test results and fatigue strength of laser beam, well, this steel aluminum joint, so we have a hybrid um, connection, um, especially considering variable amplitude loading and possibly corrosive environment. Um, this is the work which uh, we had in a research project at the Fraunhofer LBF, and um, yeah, the results presented here are together with my colleagues from the Institute. So the motivation was given by uh, the ship industry and especially the design and manufacturing of such ships and yachts. Um, and in this uh, design process um, they use the combination of steel and aluminum um, yeah, to um, decrease, for example, the center of gravity and therefore increase the stability of the ship and the travel speed. So, um, in this particular case, it is used an explosion welding process, um, which has a target material, in this case a steel material, and a flyer material, which is, uh, yeah, um, uh, has the velocity V um, <laughs> to be joined to the target material at the bottom. So, um, with this combination, it's possible to um, have the body panel and uh, this structure out of aluminium and uh, yeah, this uh, lower structure made out of steel. And this research project is what it was now the idea to use a more local joining process, in this case laser beam welding, um, to replace this cost intensive explosion welding uh, by a local joining between, in this case here, the upper one is steel and the lower one is the aluminium material. So we investigated um, this process, which was optimized by a project partner in terms of uh, fatigue strength. Um, in one step of, for just this overlap joint configuration, but in the second step there was a specially designed adapter specimen, um, which now included several welds between the steel material and the aluminum material. Um, comparison was made with the um, explosion welded adapter and uh, yeah, tests performed were under constant amplitude loading and under variable amplitude loading. Um, variable amplitude loading um, refers to a linear load spectrum which is um, more or less conventional for, uh, ship, uh, for the ship industry. Um, some tests were performed under corrosion, for example, um, for the overlap joint and for uh, the adapter specimen. In terms of uh, limited time, I will, will skip here this corrosion and this explosion welded adapter, um, but it will be in the publication um, afterwards. So the fatigue tests we performed um, are shown here in the servo hydraulic driven test rig at a test frequency of 30 Hz. Um, a load ratio of R equals zero, which is quite common for um, uh, welded components and welded joints. Um, under constant amplitude loading and variable amplitude loading. Um, a camera observation was used um, yeah, to um, localize the um, failure um, at the weld root. So this is the steel material again, this is the aluminum material, and here's the joining. Um, a little bit better to see over here. Um, and when the failure occurs, the crack propagates from uh, this uh, interface between steel and aluminum into the aluminum material. Um, the final failure criterion was the total rupture of the specimen, and uh, this is then shown in the SN curve, so in this case it's a force amplitude versus number of cycles to rupture. And what we see in this um, uh, curve is that um, yeah, producing a maximum likelihood estimation for the Wöhler line, we have a slope of around. 3.4 and a knee point, and uh, in this case it is a combination um, in blue and in green of a controlled uh, laser welded process where the penetration depth uh, is controlled by a spectroscopic analysis and an uncontrolled, more or less, or an in process without, without this control. We see that the test results uh, more or less uh, fit together <coughs> in one Wheeler line. In terms of the 
um, adapter specimen. There were two versions, starting from a more longer version, one of this uh, joint adapter, which had a lower fatigue strength. And during the project, um, yeah, there was a development to use this more compact uh, adapter, um, which then afterwards um, had this increased fatigue strength, uh, in this case, uh, a factor of three. Um, the failure which uh, we detected from, from this adapter specimen, so the second one, uh, version two, um, is shown here and we mainly see under constant amplitude loading independent of the load level that the failure occurred at the lowest um, of these uh, wells between steel and aluminum, so crack initiation at the lowest wells and then propagating right through the aluminum. Um, this is also seen from the uh, fracture surface, so we have uh, crack origins, we have fracture surface um, fatigue, fracture surface in the middle and a, a final fracture on the other side. Um, this was uh, more or less uh, the correct behavior under constant amplitude loading. For variable amplitude loading, as I said before, a linear uh, load spectrum was used, so um, a linear distribution in the uh, logarithmic scale of the commutative frequency. And uh, in terms of uh, uh, reducing the test, uh, testing time, and there was a small omission um, for the non-damaging uh, parts of force amplitudes. From this uh, linear spectrum, we derived a random load time history, which is shown on the right side. And what we then found testing these in the same uh, servo hydraulic test trick is that um, the failure is now shifted from here you know, these lower um, wells uh, between steel and aluminum to the higher parts of this um, adaptive specimen and is not propagating right through the aluminum but to uh, both sides of the steel um, material. So there is a difference between uh, constant amplitude loading and variable amplitude loading um, in terms of the uh, failure behavior. In this case what we also see is um, we have here now uh, again investigated um, the controlled process, so well-defined um, welding depth penetration depth um, versus uh, the process which had just an optimized oscillating process but was not controlled in terms of uh, penetration depth. So the results um, between constant amplitude loading, uh, the lower Wheeler curve, and then here you can see um, yeah, the more or less Gassner curve, so test results under this um, linear load spectrum um, shows us, as we can see, that there is a, an increase in the scatter, which is now um, from 1 to 1.26. Um, to um, yeah, increase to 1.145, 1, uh, 1 um, which is um, yeah, the ratio between 10% and 90% of survival probability. So, um, yeah, this is one, one point we find um, in terms of uh, comparison of variable and constant amplitude loading. What we also see is uh, that the initial um, slope of the radar curve from around 3 is now. Um, more flattened so that um, in this case uh, we see that there is uh, no possibility to um, do a linear damage accumulation um, on the basis of this Wheeler curve. Um, the third point which we see is that uh, in terms of forest amplitude, um, the highest level in the high cycle fatigue regime of the Wheeler curve uh, results in a run out uh, under variable amplitude loading. Um, of the Gassner curve, so that there is, even though that there is a uh, high scatter in the Gassner curve, there is a uh, 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 high increase of the fatigue strength if you use a linear uh, load spectrum. What we then did to explain or explore a little bit more um, the difference between this high loading fatigue failure and uh, the one of a constant amplitude loading is um, doing uh, a speckle pattern on one of the specimens and 
doing a 10 side test, starting from zero um, to 30 kilonewton and then to um, 32 kilonewtons, um, where the final fracture occurred, which is uh, in correspondence to the very amplitude loading here in the um, steel material. And then we analyzed the difference in terms of digital image correlation between 0 and 30 kilonewtons. And, um, uh, took a look at the um, stray, strain localizations. And this, at this point, we had to distinguish between the steel and the aluminum material, so there are different scales. One is belonging to the uh, steel mat uh, aluminum material in the center, and the scale of all the steel material is different to show um, for every single material um, the highest strain values. And then we see for the aluminum, it is here the lower part, which we had as a failure um, location for the constant amplitude testing. And uh, in terms of higher loading, then the um, yeah, failure region changes to um, high strains in uh, the steel material here in this outer part at the upper uh, part of the specimen. So this gives us um, an idea how failure can change from constant amplitude loading to variable amplitude loading in terms of higher load amplitudes. Um, and this is due to different shape of the wells um, which we found uh, within this specimen. So some have a more or less good connection here on this side between steel and aluminum and there are some parts which are less connected. So, um, this was more or less the, the, the final result, so a little sum up and conclusion of the work we did. So we had um, failure initiating from the root of the well seam and propagated through the aluminum uh, due to constant amplitude loading. Um, we found uh, that the fatigue results for left joints showed a good correlation with the well width and penetration depth. So we had a um, laser process which was controlled sometimes and in another case it was not controlled and um, they were at the same level let's say in terms of uh, weather results and what we should keep in mind is that such a control process is um, yeah, necessary for the application in terms of variations in the thickness or something else. And finally um, yeah, we found different failure locations on the constant and variable amplitude loading and what I didn't show is the part of corrosion fatigue and um, where a fatigue strength reduction about, uh, of about 10 to 25 percent uh, in terms of left joints and 10 to 20 percent in terms of uh, in terms of adapter specimens was found. Um, so that the final step would be to do a stress-based evaluation including nominal and large stress approaches. So I'd like to thank you, and uh, I'd like to thank the partners and the funding. Thank you. Thank you very much.